All right, what are we looking at here? This is a soft tissue neck lateral view. Okay, we'll just try to point out a few normal anatomical structures. Um, structure is important. This is the epiglottis. Okay, this is the fixed portion of the epiglottis, which is kind of below the hyoid bone right here, which we see here. Uh, this is a mobile portion of the epiglottis, which folds back when you swallow. Okay, and this should be nice and thin, a few millimeters thick. Okay, these line right here, this represents the epiglottic folds, okay? The posterior wall, lattice, okay? This should also be nice and thin, a few millimeters thick. This also represents the anterior wall, the piriform sinus, which we see here, okay? This structure right here represents the vollecula, okay, which is anterior to the epiglottis, okay? Here you can see kind of the soft tissue density outline of the wall of the vollecula, this line represents the posterior wall, the hypopharynx, this thin line right here. Okay. Um, this is the laryngeal ventricle. Okay. And above it is the false cords, the soft tissue density line. Below it is the true cords, the soft, this soft tissue density line right here. And then here you can see the calcified uh, thyroid cartilage, which kind of shields the larynx. Um, this soft tissue density structure right here represents the thyroid gland. Okay, we talked about that prior video I made. Um, and it's important to kind of like learn kind of like these normal uh, structures here just because um, a lot of times you'll be looking at this, uh, when, you know, when x-rays coming from the ER rule out epiglottitis. And you want to have a good sense of what normal looks like to be able to diagnose the abnormal. Um, in a case of epiglottitis, what can happen is the epiglottis will become thickened. Okay, and what will happen? The molecule will become effaced or bowed anteriorly. And then what else can happen? You get airway obstruction from the superglottis. So in addition to that, the hypopharynx will begin to distend. You'll get distension of the piriform sinuses. And usually in epiglottitis, it's almost it's a it's basically an inflammation of the epiglottis. You can have this so-called thumb sign. But another thing that you get in those cases of superglottic uh, infection or inflammation is thickening of the epiglottic folds. So again, this should be a few millimeters, and this is really what causes the airway obstruction. When you get thickening or inflammation there, uh, you get narrowing of the superglottic airway, okay, which can result in airway obstruction. Uh, this structure, these structures right here represent the, you know, the genohyoid uh, um, muscles here. Um, and these attach to the anterior aspect of the hyoid bone. So when you swallow, um, the hyoid bone kind of moves up like this. The epiglottic folds back and closes off the airway. 